What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. This is the design for today's tutorial. Now the canvas size for today is 2000 by 2000 pixels and there's a link to everything you're going to need in the requirements in the description down below. And with that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're going to do is go up to your colors and we're going to take a look at the selection of colors we've got. So we've got a nice little variation of light tones through reds into very dark reds and browny sort of colors. Now for the background, we're going to select this one here at the middle color on the first column. I'm just going to drag it onto the page for now. Next, we're going to go to our layers and we're going to create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors now and we're going to select what is going to be used as our background color, which is actually this color here on the far right hand side. Using this, we're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And it doesn't matter what your brush size is, all we're going to do is simply draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. Hold your pen down and put your finger on the screen to get a nice perfect circle. And let's make something roughly around about that sort of size. And before we continue, we're going to grab our cursor, tap on your cursor. Make sure snapping is turned on with the option down here. And you're going to want to move your circle into the center of your design. So you'll get an orange line running down the vertical and horizontal axis. And then you can tap on your cursor when you're done. And then you can drag and drop your color into the outside. This is going to act as sort of a top layer that's going to contain the whole design within the middle there. Now we'll get started on our pagoda in the center. So for this, we're going to go to our actions. We're going to go to the canvas and we're going to turn on the drawing guide. We're then going to edit the drawing guide and we're going to go to symmetry and we're going to use the option of vertical. Now, if you go to options here, you'll have the option of vertical and that'll put a line straight down the middle of your screen. Meaning if you draw on one side, you also see it on the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to tap on that layer and we're going to drawing assist it. And now we're going to start drawing in the shapes that we need to create it. So we're going to start off first of all in the very middle. It doesn't matter particularly where your position is. We're going to create one element and then duplicate it multiple times. So we're just trying to get the initial shape here. So we're going to start in the middle on the line, draw in an arc. Now we want to create something roughly sort of like that. See, it's got a nice swoop down, but it kind of sort of swoops up a little bit. And if you need to, just like me, you can then go right into the center and just create a nice little point from your connecting lines. Then we can create another little swooping arc from the edge here. Hold your pen down to get a nice perfect arc. You can move that around then. I'm going to go for something around about there. We're then going to create the opposite direction of an arc. So we're going to go from this way to this way. Hold your pen down to get an arc and then just change the angle if required. So something like that will look pretty good. And then we're going to link those up into the center. So just creating a nice swooping line into the center. Hold your pen down and like so. And you'll be able to drag and drop your color in. Now these edges are a little bit too rounded. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our eraser. We're going to tap on our eraser. We're going to go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And you can see I've maxed it out. It's maximum size there on the edge. And we're just going to sort of sharpen up those edges. So you can see my brush around the outside there and I'm just going to cut into there. And cut into here, creating some nice sharp points here. Definitely at the top here so we can get a nice smooth point at the top. Like so. And then taking a look, we get some nice sharp edges. And if you want to, you can refine yours any further if you wish. Now I'm going to leave mine as is. What we're going to do now is if we zoom out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the full tower. So we're going to go to our layers. First of all, go to your layers and create a new one. Go to your selection tool. Use the option of rectangle and turn on the option of color fill. And you'll be able to just create the main body here of our tower. So we're going to sort of draw that in like so. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't sit in the middle, just something roughly around about that sort of width. Grab your cursor and then move that to the center because snapping is still turned on. Tap on your cursor once you've moved it into the middle. And then what we can do is we can go to our layers. We can go to the shape that we created at the top here. We can swipe it to the left hand side and duplicate it. Grab your cursor, move that down. And then that's going to be our extra little tiers underneath. So you can really start to flush out the full building now. So you want to create a gap in between, tap on your cursor, and then just continue to repeat that all the way down the building. Swipe the shape to the left hand side and duplicate it. Grab your cursor. And then drag that shape down and you get the blue lines on either side let you know you've moved perfectly straight down and try and sort of mimic the gap in between above tap on your cursor and then continue to do that until you flush it out with five levels so going all the way down again with another shape we 
make sure we hit that orange line running down the middle. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we're going to do that one more time. So swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and then move that down. Now it doesn't matter just like mine if it starts to run off the bottom of the edge. We can then tap on our cursor. And then what we're going to do is, once we've added all our shapes, we're going to go to our layers. And we're going to swipe from the left to the right on all the layers that make up the building. So we should have six in total. Grab your cursor and just move that upwards. Now you want to create a little bit more of the body towards the bottom. So we've got a little bit of space there between that, the building and the ground underneath. And something like that looks pretty good to me. What we're also going to do then is we're going to go to our layers. And the main body of the building, we're going to swipe it to the left and we're going to duplicate it. We're going to grab our cursor and we're going to use the freeform option this time. We're going to tap on freeform. We're going to drag this top node down because what I want to do is from this point down, I want to widen the building up a little bit. So I'm going to widen it up to the right there and then push that right into the center. So when I tap on my cursor because I'm done, it starts to stagger a little bit. So we've got a slightly skinnier part towards the top. Now there's one extra little detail I want to add at the very top of the building. So we're going to go to our layers. We can create a new layer because in a minute we're going to merge all of them into one layer. So we're going to create one new layer and go to our brush. I'm going to zoom in and right on the top here I want to add some detailing. Now what we do want to do is we want to go to that layer again. We want to tap on that layer and we want to drawing assist it. And then with our brush, our monoline, I'm going to drop it all the way down to 1%. I'm going to drop my pen right on the line and draw it all the way down and pop my finger on the screen so it's nice and straight. And then with that, I want to create some little bumps on the top here. So that's a little pole with some detail on it. So I'm sort of creating a horizontal line to the left and then curving it up. See that sort of shape there. So it's almost like a semicircle. So I'm going to do five of those all the way up. Make sure we leave the gap nice and even every time. And then the final one, just add one more at the top and then zooming out. We should end up with some nice little extra bits of detail there towards the top of our pagoda. So now we've got our full structure, we can go ahead and merge it into one layer. So we're going to go to our layers and make sure you're happy with it at this point. Otherwise, we're going to simply pinch all of those layers into one. And now before we merge it to the actual circle on the outside, we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to start creating the land that sits around it. So I'm going to create some sort of just bumpy, rocky lines down here, just flushing out the groundwork a little bit and then go all the way around to that start point and then drag and drop my color in like so. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm just going to create some bumpy little parts here up onto the side and go all the way around to my start point, and drag and drop my color in. Now that's sort of the foundation. And then we can go ahead and fill it out a little bit more if you want to. So you can increase your brush size up to about 30 or 40% and just create some bigger lumps in here. Just some little sort of rocky bit of terrain nearby, almost like it's surrounded by cliffs, something like that. Do the same on the left hand side now, to sort of mimic the right hand side. Taking a look at that, I'm making sure my levels there that run through the building are pretty similar to one another, and they are. Now we're going to go ahead and draw in the cherry blossoms that are going to sort of make their way in from the left and right hand side. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go to our brush library. And at the bottom in calligraphy, we have the script brush, and we're going to use that to create our cherry blossoms. Now I'm going to zoom over to the left hand side. So I'm going to get started on the first one. Now, first of all, I'm going to draw in a branch. So my brush size is set to about 10%. We can maybe go a bit bigger, maybe up to about 20. I'm going to draw in the first branch. It wants to sort of curve upwards. And with this pen, you can let go and get a nice little flick on the end. And then with a cherry blossom, you end up with really flowing lines in the branches. And then from that, you can go ahead and plan out the rest of your cherry blossom. So maybe from here, I create a nice little wavy line and just let that run off like that. And that's definitely something you want to try and get in your design. You want to start off kind of heavy with your pressure, let some nice waves run and then let that run out into a lovely little thin point on the end there. Let's maybe do the same here as well. Just let that run off into a thin point. I'm going to go ahead and create a little line here as well. And then maybe from here as well, I'm going to create a lovely flowing branch with a thinner one just making its way from here. And you want to try and nicely make sure all those points just run off nice and flowing. 
And then what you want to do is you maybe thicken out the base of the branch just a little bit, just down here, just to thicken that up as it makes its way into the design. And then to flush out the actual branch, you want to just create these lovely little flicks, just little flicks here and there. You can put them on the branches as well if you want to, like here. Nice little flicks. And that will give you something to put your little blossoms on. So something like that. And you can put some nice thin ones like so. And then all we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and start adding in your little flowers. Now all I do for my cherry blossoms is I'm going to reduce my brush size down to maybe about 5% and zoom in. And I'm going to start off with one petal and then just, just five petals. And you kind of press a little bit firmer towards the outside and brush them in like so. Just create little sort of stars. If you need to, you can create tiny little flicks just to attach them onto your actual tree. But then you can get nice and confident and push them right onto the branches themselves. And that would nicely tie them all in together. So just start flushing out your cherry blossoms and filling out the full design until you're happy with the quantity that you've added on your branches. Now I'm going to continue to maybe go backwards and forwards between my branches just to make sure I've got some good coverage and make sure it's nice and consistent across all of our little branches there. Adding in that one there. Zooming out and get an idea for where you are and just continue to add even more. So I'm going to go ahead here. Add in one there. And sometimes they can be nice and close to the branches. Sometimes they can be a little bit further towards the end or a little bit further away. You can leave a gap. It's all part of the style not a problem if they're not connecting you don't need to run the branch straight into the actual flower itself i'm going to come down here as well flush out this area a bit more maybe add one here as well so it's nice and sort of bulky down in this corner add another one here and you do want to add a good amount of sort of level of detail in here so just a good coverage of your little flowers Make some nice and small you can do with the pressure of this brush they don't all have to be the same size they can all be different sizes as you go filling out that cherry blossom let's make sure we go ahead and do the same on the end here and then maybe one underneath like so you can always add a nice little flick in there as i mentioned and you can always add them right on the end of all your flicks you added in your design. I'm going to zoom out, take a look at where we are. Let's go ahead and add some more in down here. Beautiful cherry blossom. Add that in. Maybe add a little flick. And you can always adapt your design as you go. That's just a lesson really for any design. You can always make changes as you go. So if you want to introduce a new branch or a new little flick here and there, you should always try and make sure you're working towards creating a design that is going to move with you as you're making your way through the process. Nice little flick there, add that on. Let's add that here. That's beautiful. And then maybe I'm going to just add in a few more up here. Some bigger ones, maybe a tiny little one here. Zooming out, what are we looking at? That looks pretty good to me. I think we could maybe add one more, maybe just on a little flick here, just on the inside. And then zooming out, you should end up with a really beautiful cherry blossom just making its way in from that left hand side. Now take a sec to pause if you need to, so you can go ahead and add in some extra details or maybe get a bit closer to mine if that's what you're going for. The only thing I'm going to do is just add in a little bulk here where maybe the branch is just attaching onto the tree. That's all I want to do just to round it off a little bit more so it's less flying in from the left hand side. Now what we are going to do is we're not going to draw that in twice, we're simply going to go to our layers. We're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. If you grab your cursor and you flip it horizontally, move it to the right hand side. Now we don't want a perfect symmetrical look so what you do is you flip it vertically again and then you grab the green node here and just rotate it round until the angles are somewhat matching so they're pointing up towards the same location. And you should end up with a, another cherry blossom, but without having to draw out another full design. And if you tap on your cursor, you then should save yourself some time. And you've got two beautiful cherry blossoms there making their way, pointing into the center of your design. 
So now we've got all of our silhouette work, we just want to lay them out correctly how we want them. Now what we want is we want our building here to be smack bang in the center. So we're going to grab our cursor and we're going to move that up until we hit the orange line running straight through horizontally as well. So that's quite a lot higher than where we were and that's fine. You can grab your uniform option if you want to, maybe scale that down a smidge and then pop it again in the center of your design. Now I've done that on purpose so that when I tap on my cursor, we now know that we need to move some of this groundwork up as well as we'll move the cherry blossoms out to the right and left, scale them down. Because we want our main focus of the design, which is the building to be smack bang in the center. So then if we go to our layers, we go back to the groundwork layer then go to your brush and grab the monoline brush under calligraphy. I'm going to increase the size up and I'm going to then work on the outside here and just run that into where we had it and then up and out to the left hand side again. And then you may need to then just go all the way around and link up in case there's a gap here and then drag and drop the color in. And now I've added in the groundwork. I think we just need to scale this down a smidge more. So I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to go back to the building, tap on the cursor with the uniform option selected, just scale that down again and just pop it smack bang in the center because this is the point where we want to make any adjustments we need to. And if I tap on my node in the top right, you can get an idea for my final sizing, which is 448 by 1010. And tap on my cursor when I'm done. And then again, I'm just going to adjust the groundwork underneath. So I'm going to go to my layers, go back to the ground layer, tap on my brush again, and then just going to flush out this groundwork here running that into the base of the building and then running it off to the right hand side and then filling in any gaps that we need to and then you can go ahead and adjust the sides if you want to maybe create some bigger sort of rocky shapes and even bring it a little bit higher if you want to on either side but something like that will look pretty good and if we fill in that little gap we can then progress on to adjusting our cherry blossoms so we're going to go to our layers the left one just grab our cursor Maybe scale it down with the uniform option there at the bottom selected and maybe move it up to the top left hand corner basically of the design. And you may want to rotate it a little bit as you move it higher just to make sure it flows in. Tap on your cursor and then repeat that on the right hand side. So go to your layers, go to your right cherry blossom, tap on your cursor, scale it down, rotate it a little bit and then move it up and then see if you need to make any further adjustments. But that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to tap on my cursor. We should end up with this beautiful little scene now. All ready to go so we can add in our background elements. So now you've done all your silhouette work, I just want to take a moment to show you some of the designs that I've been posting over on my Patreon. Patrons get access to three exclusive tutorials every single month, as well as extra benefits on my Discord server, early access to YouTube videos, and much more. Now there's a link in the description down below to my Patreon if you want to come and support me over there. There's also a link to all the previous designs if you want to take a look at all the tutorials that you would get when you sign up to my Patreon. And with all that said, let's get back to the tutorial. So let's do exactly that. Let's go to our layers and let's complete the top step by merging all these layers together. Now, if you do want to make any adjustments, this is the time to do it. So you're going to go ahead and merge all five of those layers together. Then go underneath that layer onto the background layer then create a new layer. Go to your colors and you're going to want to select the fourth color on the top row. We're then going to go to our selection tool. We're going to use the rectangle option and color fill needs to be on. And we're going to run this as a bit of ground that's going to sort of run through our tower like so. Big box there and then tap on your selection tool when you're done. Go to your layers. Then go to your background again. Create a new layer. Go to your colors and grab the third color on the top row. Make sure your brush is still the monoline brush, which it should be. And you can reduce the brush size down to maybe around about sort of five or six percent. It doesn't really matter so much other than getting a nice point on our mountain. Now what we're going to do is on the left hand side, we're just going to create a lovely little swoop up. Hold your pen down to get a nice arc like so. And then what you can do is from that point, just run that all the way down to the right hand side. You can hold your pen down if you want to. Now that may make a disconnect up here and you just need to link that together for a second. And then go from your end point all the way around to your start point, linking them up go all the way around from either side. So you can drag and drop your color in. What we're then going to do is we're going to go to our eraser quickly, tap on it and make sure we're using calligraphy and the monoline brush. And I want to make sure the brush is maxed out and I just want to just chop off the top of that peak there. 
I'm gonna make sure we've got a nice flat peak there. And then I'm gonna go to my layers. I'm gonna swipe that layer to the left hand side and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two. We're gonna go to our cursor. We're gonna flip that horizontally so we get another matching mountain. And then maybe actually just scale that down just a smidge, like so. Maybe move it in ever so slightly. Tap on your cursor. Then go to your colors. Go to the second color on the top row and then drag and drop that into that mountain on the right. Now we can add the sun in the background. So we're gonna to go to our layers. Let's create a new layer and drag it underneath our mountains. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna double tap in the top left hand corner to select white. Let's draw in a circle in the middle of our canvas and hold your pen at the end and pop your finger on the screen to get a nice perfect circle. And let's create something that's wider than our pagoda there in the center. Drag and drop your color in, grab your cursor, and then pop that on the orange vertical and horizontal axis so it's nice and centered. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We're then going to add in some radiating lines before we start to add in all the patterns for the design. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to swipe the circle to the left hand side and duplicate it, the sun layer. The bottom one out of the two, we're going to tap on the N and we're going to lower that all the way down to about, let's go down to about 15%. And then you can go ahead and grab your cursor with the uniform option turned on, scale that up and then pop it back on the horizontal and vertical axis, something like that until you end up with a nice little gap in between the two. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then let's repeat that step. So go to your layers, swipe your current layer to the left hand side and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two. We don't need to change the opacity because it's already there. So we go to our cursor, and then we want to scale this up, but we want to create a bigger gap than we did last time. We want these gaps to continuously get bigger. So once you pop it in the center again, you'll get an idea for how much of a gap you created. So I need to scale mine up a little bit more and then pop it on those axes there. Tap on your cursor when you're done. You can see the gap I've got between mine. It's very much sort of doubled almost in size. And we're going to do that one more time. So we're going to go to our layers. Swipe the layer to the left hand side and duplicate it. And then the bottom one out of the two, grab your cursor and then scale that up, make it a bit larger this time. You know you need to go a bit larger for this one and then pop it on those axes like so. You should end up with a lovely scaling up sun effect in the background. And now let's go ahead and start adding in some patterns. So we're gonna start at the back and make our way forward. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna drag it underneath all of the suns but in front of the background. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here, the middle row on the second column. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to find the backgrounds collection that I've put in the description down below, which is a free set of brushes. And in here, we've got a bunch of different styles that we can use. And for the background, we're going to use this one up here. So it's actually the one, two, three, four, five, the fifth one down from the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure my brush is maxed out because the scale of the pattern doesn't change. But what we can do is we can simply press really firm and drop all that pattern into the center and it will cover the whole screen in one go. Now what we need to do is we just want to move it so the pattern runs straight down the center of our design. So we're going to go to our cursor and we're going to have to zoom in a little bit. Now we do have our drawing guideline on and we still have that on on purpose. So there should be a faint line running down your canvas. You want to move your pattern until it runs straight through the middle of that pattern. If I tap on my cursor, if we zoom right in, it's just a pixel off, but it's pretty much there running straight down the middle of our canvas. Now what we want to go ahead and do is we want to feather that out in the center to create a nice glowing effect. So we're going to go to our eraser. We're going to tap on the eraser and we're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush. Now my brush size is set to about 20%. Now you can maybe increase that just a smidge, maybe about 22. And from the center outwards, you're gonna to wanna to sort of just very lightly just continue in a circular motion, just push a raising all the way out to the outside. Now what that will do is that will start to fade out the center, get a really faint bit of the pattern. And then towards the outside, you'll end up with a lot more of that prominent pattern running around the outside of our design. Now we've done that, we're gonna move on to the mountain here. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna to go to that mountain, create a new layer. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it to that mountain. We now need to flip the color the other way around. So we're gonna to go to our colors and grab this color here on the left hand side of the first column, so the middle one. Then go to your brush library, 
and we're going to want to pick a pattern for this one and I'm going to use this one here so it is the third one from the top and again you can just max out your brush if you want to and cover the entire canvas with the pattern and then what you can do is it's up to you you can grab your cursor and you can scale it down so if you want more of the pattern in the mountain so something like that looks pretty nice scale that right down make sure it's still covering the whole of the mountain tap on your cursor then grab your eraser again and blend from the bottom so we're going to get rid of this bottom edge fade that out until you end up with a really soft amount of color and pattern towards the top of the mountain and that's just all we need to do for that one let's move on to the other mountain on the left hand side we go to our layers we go to the mountain above create a new layer above it and tap on it and clipping mask it then we go to our brush library tap on it again and pick another pattern for this one which is going to be the one down from that so it's the fourth one from the top for this one and then again you can make your brush maxed out and cover the entire screen then tap on your cursor and then you can scale that down. But with this mountain, you want to make sure your patterns fill in from left to right because this one runs all the way to the right hand side. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Go back to your eraser and do exactly the same. Just fade out from the bottom very lightly to start with and build it up. You can get rid of the majority of this down here, leaving it very faint, but you've got a little bit of a pattern in there. We're then going to move on to the land layer underneath. So we go to our layers, we go up a layer to the ground, create a new layer, tap on the layer and clipping mask it again. Go to your brush library and pick a pattern for this one. Now for this one, I'm going to use this one here. So that is this one. They're not labeled correctly. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to use the eighth one here. Again, make sure your brush is maxed out and you can just cover the whole screen in the pattern. I'm then going to go to my brush and my cursor for it. I'm going to then scale that down making sure it still fills the majority of the canvas from left to right and make sure it at least fills that shape. You can, if you want to, maybe grab the freeform option and just scale it down. I'll change the pattern and flatten it out a little bit. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then you can go ahead and grab your eraser and from the bottom, just fade that out from the bottom edge all the way up towards those mountains, letting a little bit of that pattern just come through so very lightly and then leaving the majority on that color there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our layers and we're going to work on the top layer. So we create a new layer above the outside sort of silhouette work. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it. Before we add the pattern though, we're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this red here. So the second one on the top row. We need to change our brush and go down to airbrushing and the soft brush. And then you're going to want to create your brush size, maybe roughly around about sort of 30% and then tap smack bang in the middle of the design for a second, you get a nice red orb. And if you grab your cursor and use the uniform option, you can scale that right up, make a big orb and make sure that that runs straight down the middle, hitting the orange line there and create a big glow towards the top of our design. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Now this is going to be used because we're going to use a layer effect in a second and we want to emphasize the pattern towards the top and let it fade out from the bottom just the same way as all of these elements in here do. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our layer options for this layer. And we're gonna scroll the layer option all the way down towards the bottom until we hit the option of divide. We're then gonna to go to our colors. And we're gonna select the color to the left-hand side of the first column. So it's actually the middle one down. Then grab your brush. Go back up to the backgrounds collection that we've been using for all the patterns. And once you're in here, we're going to go ahead and grab this brush here. So it may be easier to do it from the bottom. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's the seventh one up from the bottom. Increase the brush size up to a maximum size again. I'm going to draw all over the canvas like so. And then that will give us our nice little pattern that's running over the actual main part of the design. But if we go to our layers, this layer is not currently clipped and it started to run into the actual main design. So we simply just tap on that layer and clipping mask it. And if you want to, you can lower the opacity. If you want to have a play with it, just tone it down a smidge. I'm actually going to drop mine to about 60% here. And if we tap away and look at the design and then the final step is to go to your layers. This silhouette layer that we've been using at the very top, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two, you're going to want to go ahead and tap on that layer and alpha lock it. Go to your colors and grab this color here. So the middle color on the second column, go to your layers, 
tap on that layer and fill it then grab your cursor and just move that up a smidge just a smidge so something like that maybe just zoom out and maybe move it down so you can actually move it up with your pen but then tap a couple of times to move it a pixel in the direction of your desired choice so i'm actually going to move it back down again tap on my cursor and the outcome is that we end up with this beautiful sort of outline where the lighting is hitting everything on this silhouette now you can go to your actions turn off your drawing guide so it doesn't distract you at the very end and if you pinch with two fingers and go full screen with four you end up with today's finished design so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial lots of patterns lots of fun and if you did drop a like down below it helps the channel out an awful lot and if you're new here i post procreate content every single week so hit that subscribe button down below and if you want even more tutorials from me you can come and join my patreon family and shout out to all my supporters over there on patreon there's a link in the description down below and if you're interested in any of the equipment i'm using the sketchboard pro that you can use code joel create to get 10 percent off the paper light screen cover or the pen tips grip and glove there's links to all my equipment in the description down below and with all that said I'll see you in the next one.